A major update on that contentious lawsuit between Mick Mars and his former bandmates in Motley Crue just in from the courts. You had Mick Mars suing his bandmates for records related to the business structure and all sorts of records pertaining to his tenure with the band. This all really kicked off in late 2022 when Mick Mars made that announcement he was going to be retiring from touring. And then that Motley Crue statement that sort of brushed over that fact and said, we thank you for your contributions and we're going to be having John Five step up and step into the band. By the way, I think John Five is a badass guitar player. And if you're going to hire anybody for that gig, you're going to hire John Five. I know I would. But anyways, look, Mick Mars feels very strongly about this. He felt as though he was being asked unfairly to take a smaller percentage of revenue from the band, considering the fact that he's part owner of the group. He alleges he's being forced out of the band. And so this lawsuit that he filed was about compelling the band to turn over records related to the structure, the finances, and all of that stuff so that they could prepare this legal case, which is still due to go into arbitration. The case isn't going to happen in court, but it is going to go into arbitration, which will require them to work out some sort of amenable uh, resolution to all parties involved. But it's gotten ugly, no question about it. We're going to look at some of the things that these members have said. Uh, Mick Mars has said a lot about this in the media. And of course, Mick Mars is also releasing his own solo record, which has gotten a lot of really good reviews recently. We would love to talk to Mick Mars on the podcast as well. But look, this is what has been said in the past first by Mick Mars about this. Then we're going to get to the judge's decision in just a moment. So here's a major interview that Mick Mars did on the subject last year with Variety. He said, I can't believe they're pulling this crap. I carried those bastards for years. I remember, he's claiming that they're really forcing him out of the group. He wanted to maintain a member writing in the studio. Uh, Motley Crue does have an album that's coming out in 2024 this year, uh, but it will not feature Mick Mars, who says that he can still write music in the studio. This was about him not being able to tour extensively because he deals with that painful, painful medical condition called ankylosing spondylitis, which he's dealt with for many years and he's dealt with it with so much class and uh, it's a debilitating disease. And I have so much respect for him because of how he's been able to carry forward and I, and I always will. Um, so he says, uh, I carried those bastards for years. He was asked how he felt quitting the road. He said, 41 years of hard work, mentally and physically, of course, I miss it, but I don't, you know what I mean? Playing wise, playing in front of a large crowd and seeing the world, I miss that, but my body says you can't do that, Mick. I'm more at peace for sure. My body just doesn't want to do it. I don't like old because my brain wants to go and my body goes, nope, you ain't going nowhere, bud. Now, this is super important. It says there's a lot of speculation and it says he was retiring just from the road in a statement and then the band statement said that he had retired, period. Fans weren't sure what to believe. I certainly was confused. He said, yes, exactly. Things get twisted around sometimes from the other band members. I didn't really know if I should say this, but... Those guys have been hammering on me since 87, trying to replace me. They haven't been able to do that because I'm the guitar player. I helped form this band. It's my name. I came up with the crew moniker. My idea is my money that I had from a backer to start this band. It wouldn't have gone anywhere. And then to be hearing stuff from people like Bob Daisley from Ozzy Osbourne's band when they were touring with them and Carmine Apiece. Um, the thing is... The thing that they keep pushing for many years is that I have a bad memory, and that's full-blown, out-of-proportion crap. Around 2012, when they started saying that my memory was bad and I didn't remember the songs, I came home and saw all my doctors because I keep myself together, because I'm an old bastard. They had all the 10th Street people there, probably about five or six people, all my doctors going, there's nothing wrong with them, and now they're still playing that game with me. So no, the truth is, I want to retire from touring because of my ankylosing spondylitis, um, and I don't have a problem remembering the songs. I don't have a problem with any of that stuff, but I do have a problem with them constantly, the whole time, telling me that I lost my memory. No, wrong, that's wrong, absolutely wrong. But my stupid body is telling me, no, don't do that. You know, I'm gonna be 72 years old, and I've been touring with these guys 41 years, helping build the brand, helping to do this and that, and you're served with papers going, this is crazy, this is stupid, I mean, come on. And now this is so important. In your suit, there's a footnote that refers to other instances where someone retired from certain duties in a veteran band, but remained on the board or remained a full partner. I mean, if you own a business, you don't necessarily have to work there. Um, 
Sounds like you thought there was precedent for wanting to get off the road, but still have full participation as a shareholder. He said an example would be Ace Fraley. Ace still owns everything that he had when he was in Kiss and Foreigner with Lou Graham. He doesn't want to go back. There was too much brain damage, I guess. Uh, the guitar player who formed it, who's not doing too well now. It's things like that. And with me, I don't know why I'm being sued. I'm confused and I don't get it. There's no reason for me to be having to do it under arbitration or anything else. Mars was ultimately offered a package that would include five to 10% roughly of the farewell tour that he wasn't on, but he you know, said that that wasn't right. That's not his ownership share in the group. And that's really what is at the center of this case is whether or not he's gonna remain uh, an owner and controlling member of the group. And uh, I imagine this is probably gonna lead to a settlement, but let's go to this court ruling, this major court ruling from the judge who made some real definitive statements from the stand today. And uh, you have statements as well from both sides of uh, legal counsel that's weighing in on this. And so let's take a look at what Rolling Stone's reporting is. They have statements from both legal counsel. So you can see here in Rolling Stone, which I've linked to in the description, it says in a new court ruling obtained by Rolling Stone, the judge said the band stonewalling left Mars with no choice but to sue for the corporate documents last April. The Los Angeles judge noted after the filing, the band took eight months to make a final sizable document dump to Mars last month. Citing the delay, the judge ruled that Mars is now entitled to have the band cover his legal bills. So Mars is getting attorney fees out of this and with a case like this, I imagine that bill is pretty sizable. So uh, those remarks alone are uh, significant momentum uh, very much in favor of McMars. And uh, the crew has to pay the legal bills for that as well. So uh, it says, the requests were not burdensome. This is from the judge. Yet Mars was compelled to file suit. And it appears that plain that production would not have occurred without it, meaning they wouldn't have given the documents had he not filed a lawsuit. Mars is entitled to attorney fees. LA's Superior Court Judge James C. Chalfont said, in his Thursday ruling, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Uh, the judge noted that when the band produced some of the requested documents on November 2nd and gave assurances this was all of the responsive documents. Uh, but that proved to be wrong, according to the judge, pointing to articles of incorporation and income tax returns that only arrived among the records delivered in early December. He said, the documents should have been produced without the need for prodding by Mars. The failure to produce the documents earlier than December 8th amounts to refusal. So the judge feels as though um, Motley Crue should have just been immediately forthcoming and given him the documents they were withholding him and he felt the lawsuit was necessary to get those documents so they could work out what his status is with that company that um, Mars is adamant that he's a partner, board holder, uh, you know, board member, whatever you want to call it. Uh, the judge clearly faulted the band. He also ruled Thursday Mars lawsuit is now moot. That means Mars more recent request for additional entries won't be granted. Now, uh, it is moot. The lawsuit's over because that's what the lawsuit was all about. It was filed to get the documents so that they could later go into arbitration. This is going into arbitration. So it's not over. It's moving into a new venue. It's moving into a new domain. Um, so the lead law lawyer for Motley Crue seized on that portion of the ruling. He declares it a victory on behalf of the band. Uh, remember, uh, this is just Mars wanted the documents. He filed the lawsuit to get the documents. He's got the documents now. So, uh, and the judge is ordering Motley Crue to pay his attorney fees. I'm not exactly sure that's a win for Motley Crue with all due respect. And I love Motley Crue to this day. Uh, the lead lawyer for Motley Crue says the case is over. That's the key takeaway. Uh, by denying the petition as moot and ending the case, the court found that the band turned over all documents to Mars and there's nothing more to do. They did find that, but they also don't mention the criticism from the judge. The band went above and beyond its obligations by providing much more documents than the statute required. Indeed, the court's decision explained the thousands of documents that the band provided to Mars. Uh, hey, you know what? That's good legal counsel. They're doing their job there and uh, they are telling it from the Motley Crue um, perspective. Mars lawyer responds to this uh, to Rolling Stone, uh, and he said that the heart of the case, whether Mars was illegally severed from the band, is still heading into private arbitration later this year. Um, and Mars made it clear he felt betrayed by Nikki Six, Vince Neil, Tommy Lee, who are each 25% 
25% uh, shareholders in the band. Mick Mars lawyer Ed McPherson told Rolling Stone the judge's ruling on Tuesday confirmed that his client was mistreated by his bandmates. Finally, somebody somewhere told these guys they can't bully Mick anymore. We're in the middle of a huge arbitration that will ultimately decide if Mick has to give up his shares or not. If they did things properly or not, obviously, we claim they didn't do anything properly, but they feel they're above the rules. And that's what this lawsuit was about. Uh, this was them feeling they were above the rules and this judge saying, no, you're not. And you have given all the documents now, so there's nothing left for me to do, but you're gonna pay for it, he adds. I think that's a huge victory for Mick. If they wanna claim a victory, that's fine, but this is someone finally telling Mick, no, you're not crazy. These guys are bullying you and we're not gonna let it happen. So this situation is far from over. It is going into private arbitration, which is essentially like a privatized court process where a neutral party listens to both sides and is authorized to make a, basically a bound uh, decision on what happens with this business, whether uh, Mars remains ownership, he maintains ownership in the group, or whether there's some sort of a settlement. Uh, a lot of times you see these settlements that happen with the group where they buy them out, uh, some sort of agreeable fee for that is, is happens and then they go on their ways and you know, um, I hope after this arbitration process, although like Mick Mars was kind of like, what the hell, screw these guys, um, man, you know, uh, they're all older musicians and I, I just hope that they can maybe patch things up. I really do uh, because I think life is too short and this is all over money, man. And these guys have so much history together and it's a little heartbreaking to see Mick Mars just kind of out there on his own. and. Um, Nikki Six, man, I gotta say, Nikki Six has, I know some of you are gonna laugh at this, but you know, I, I'm, I'm gonna take him at face value in good faith here. Nikki Six has repeatedly said like he's hurt by this and, and how much, uh, you know, Mick Mars means to him. If this does result in a settlement, I, I hope, you know, maybe Nikki Six can reach out to him and try to patch things up because, uh, you know, it's sad to see how, even if it wasn't intentional, how Mick Mars looks like he was treated. Um, so, you know, I, I, I like Motley Crue. I, I, would, I would definitely still go see them live because they have John Five in their band. The dude's just a freaking monster uh, player. But uh, guys, I, I just, it's one of those things. It's very complicated. I understand that. So uh, we're going to be following the situation closely and see where things lead. As always, let me know what you all think in the comments. If you're new to Rockfeed, welcome to the family. Hit that subscribe button and join us for future episodes.